everybody, it's Tyler here at the 2022 Indiana Robox Invitational Check-in team number 5712. Hemlock's Gray Matter coming out of Michigan. Uh, seeing district win under their belt, semifinals in MIC, and a playoff berth at championships as well, too. Uh, we're going to be going through this full robot here, talking about all the features and capabilities with it. Really well-packaged machine as we do for that. By the way, speak more about this robot. I have uh, Anna, Morgan, and Ben. And Hemlock's Gray Matter, a team uh, this year definitely on a great trajectory for us. Keep an eye out for the team in future years. But let's learn more about this robot coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. Let's start out with your intake uh, on this robot. So uh, it looks like pretty, what I would call a beefy intake uh, for something like this. So talk to me about your design process to go this route of more rigid intake. Any testing you might've done, any iterations as well too? Yeah, so this was kind of the original intake design from the beginning. We have made some very recent changes, such as adding wheels on the outside to grab um, some balls on the field if we're drifting and we don't hit them head on. But one thing, like you said, about our intake is that it's very beefy. Um, we went with the different types of metals and like configurations just because we do, since it isn't um, extending intake, we do have it beefier so that we can run into things without having to worry about something falling off or something getting screwed up. Because as you know, with your intake, it's your main way of getting points. Um, we, one key thing to notice is that we have run it into the wall a lot of times okay. and we've come out unscathed almost every single time. So we kind of take pride in that, yeah. that we can continuously use it. Um, we have to replace the wheels every so often. Um, they're all linked together using chains and they'll spin and we can extend them. We can send the intake um, just in case any frame perimeter issues or anything like that. So the ball will roll in and it'll set head up through the um, magazine. There's two independently controlled parts of the magazine. We have the bottom and then the top. Um, and then we have two indexing sensors on the inside. Um, and when those trigger, we know when we have full capacity, which is two balls, and it'll head up and out through the shooter. On your intake itself, so if you look at like where the connection points are here, this is kind of a floating intake, right? And you have the connection points for this with the bearings. Did you have to do any stress testing to figure out like, hey, this would work out for us with like big impacts, that sort of thing? That I know of, not really. Um, in a way, kind of just trial and error, seeing sure. if things break. That was more of a stress test in itself. Yeah. Um, of course, we did want to have spare parts in case something happened, but I don't think we did any like specific testing. For sure. And then on your magazine here, uh, what did you try to do uh, to mitigate like jamming between that handoff between your intake and your magazine area? Um, so the magazine is continuously running, even if we don't have the intake down. Um, there's pros and cons to that. One of the pros is that even if our intake is broken, we can still pick up balls if we can manage to get the balls in the narrow gap of the bumpers. Um, and so it'll continuously feed it through until those sensors trigger, so that way, um, if there's a jam, we can outtake it and reverse the wheels. So it looks like a nice packaging for a good amount of compression with those compliant wheels too. So that's a good handoff to go into your uh, shooter as well too. So let's talk a little bit more about that handoff into the shooter and your design for that as well. Sure, uh, so uh, this has been uh, kind of a work in progress for the two years now. Uh, we, we used a similar shooter uh, in the 2020 season uh, for the one competition that we went to. Uh, we found th that we were able to shoot the balls extremely hard and powerful and consistent, right? Because sure. you had to have that consistency for the 2020 game. Uh, so th this is uh, this is actually fully 3D printed. Uh, so, oh, very so, cool. Some uh, some teams might use polycarbonate, sheet metal. Uh, this is fully 3D printed, which is uh, kind of my area that I uh, that I really like to talk about. So. Uh, the back side is uh, fully 3D printed out of uh, PLA, 
uh, it's a smoother kind of material, so uh, it doesn't. It, it, that was an idea to reduce some of the backspin because this year you wanted uh, you wanted the balls to enter the, yeah. the target with as little spin as possible. Um, so the back part is uh, made out of PLA, and this front part here is made out of a car, uh, reinforced, uh, reinforced nylon uh, with carbon fiber. Sure. So uh, that's where all of our motor mounting, you know, most of the stress stress was. And uh, so after champs, uh, we we knew that we were going to go to some uh, some off season events. So we added this uh, back kicker. Uh, so it, it does it compresses on both sides now. Uh, and so it's driven, it's driven down there, and it's hooked up with the belts to power the back wheel uh, to and, eliminate and you, some re of the reducing spin on it. Yeah, I'm assuming? reducing the the back spin on it. So okay. we're putting a front spin on it to counteract the the back spin. And where does uh, for your team, where's kind of your sweet spot on the field? Where do you like to shoot from? Uh, we really like the tarmac. Uh, because we're running two Falcon 500s, we can shoot from anywhere on the field. Sure. Uh, we can shoot from the far safe zone, the close safe zone. Uh, even in early autonomouses, we were shooting from the human player station instead of driving back up. So it was easy to just drive back, get the fifth ball for the auto, and just shoot right from there instead of having to waste the time to uh, to drive back up to the tarmac and shoot from there. Makes sense. Let's uh, roll into your climber here. I'd love to hear more about uh, this process of going into it. And then I'd uh, love to see a demonstration of your climber sequence as well, too. Sure. Uh, so. One early thing that we did uh, for Milford is these hooks were completely flat. Uh, so these were completely chopped off. And the reason was when we tried to pull off of the bar, uh, it, it, sheared the, it sheared through the extruded aluminum because okay. there was so much force wow, yeah. on it. So uh, it, you know, when you're trying to pull off of it, there was some, some stresses that we didn't account for uh, when we were building it. So. Uh, Th those were directly uh, connected to the frame, uh, and now we have these uh, these base plates that kind of run all the way through the chassis, um, and then uh, and then we got like tr triangles right there, the strongest shape uh, in nature. So you have triangle uh, reinforced trusses. Uh, so we were able to go uh, with the with the more round hooks. Uh, the thing with the flat hooks is you were slipping off too much, yeah. and right, you're swinging a lot this year when you're climbing. So sometimes we would slip and we'd fall. I think we fell twice this year. Okay. So we we learned from our mistakes and figured out a better way of uh, of doing that. So up here we have uh, some polycarbonate uh, little dowels. They are these mounting brackets are fully 3D printed as well. So those were printed on a Mark Forge sprinter out of Onyx. Uh, and we have limit switches here and here. This one is always compressed until it runs into a hole at the bottom of the arm. So that's when it knows how it's fully extended is when that limit switch actually clicks in instead of clicking, or it clicks out instead of clicking Makes in. Makes sense, yeah. Like more normal uh, limit switches. So we have, uh, we have it on both sides, actually. And no matter what, uh, no matter if one arm gets, maybe maybe one arm didn't fully reach, re release all the way and fully uh, retract, uh, it will automatically stop uh, because it's the two limit switches are tied into a, a harness, so they're running at the, they're they run at the exact same time. So if one limit switch gets clicked, the other one does not have to be clicked. It just it shuts it down right away. Can we see a demo of this sure. happening and kind of walk me through each stage as that happens? Yeah, so I'll, I'll enable it right now. So uh, we have a drive controller, a shooting controller, and a and a climbing controller. So I can extend them up. It has a small delay in it, uh, just so when it's dropping off the bar, it doesn't slam down onto the bar. And then you can extend it, and then you retract it to pull it off the bar and then pull it back all the way down so these passive hooks click right onto the next bar and then you just repeat the same process over again. What's the uh, time frame like for the, for uh, your team to climb? Uh, so during practice matches uh, back home we were from from ground when the hooks engage to the very top it was around uh, eight to nine seconds. Sure. Uh, we come back around 20 during competitions just to make sure that we get the climb. 
Makes a lot of sense. Appreciate a uh, great insight on that. We're going to turn it over to uh, Morgan, who's going to talk about your electrical system. Morgan, I just can't notice how great your uh, packaging is for electrical on here. So love to hear uh, more about uh, why that's so important for your team to go that route. And, and just tell me more about the process of everything. All right. Um, our number one priority was try to get all of the electrical out of the way, kind of just out of sight, out of mind. So it wasn't getting in the way, sure. it, but it was also easy to maintenance. So. There were a few spots that we had to kind of configure, which is along the bottom here. And also, if you look over here, our whole electrical board is hidden by a panel. So that was the biggest design choice that we decided on for the electrical system. Uh, it's really handy. I haven't seen any other team have something like this where it's that hidden, yeah. that absolutely nothing can get in. We've had one problem one time where the panel fell off. But that was just, I mean, my mistake where I didn't put sure. the panel on all the way. Um, but other than that, we have had no issues with this other than a couple of breakers. Um, and down here, we, we had a few changes we had to make with the CAN buses. You see, I have our custom made CAN bus here. We had to make new ones because we were running extensions all the way across every motor system not very smart of us because um, if something went wrong we couldn't find where it went wrong and then the whole system would go down so with this it's easier to pinpoint failures and fix them what is maybe some advice you can give the teams who are looking at doing like a custom CAN bus system like if they want to try for the first time what what's maybe some lessons learned on your end i think um for ours i think we made two different iterations of this CAN bus and it was just which kind of connectors were more comfortable using sure because the first one was um, PWM connectors, which we kept having issues with. They kept falling out. But these ones with the pin connectors, they're much more strong connections. So I feel like just finding out what works for you. Yeah. Well, Hemlock's great matter. Thanks a lot for taking the time to show us uh, more about your robot. Love the uh, electrical work that's gone into it and, and the custom work for that as well, too. So thank you so much. Good luck, of course, here at IRI, but we look forward to seeing your team in future years as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.